So with this format basically at a close, we're not getting any new regionals for probably until 2023 with the release of Photon Hypernova. There are some YCSs and stuff, but I mean, we're in a tier zero format. Who gives a crap? And then at near the end of December, we have a remote dual YCS that no one's going to be watching because it's probably going to be filled with cheaters. So why not we talk about the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! and a ban list? So sit back, relax, and uh, let's just dive on into it, shall we? Also, I want to say at the beginning of this video, yes, Dark Worlds are a bad deck. Every time I give my opinion about something that's negative, people seem to hate on it, which helps the YouTube algorithm because then they dislike it. It's still interaction. So it's probably just people that aren't subscribed. Also, watch the video until the end because a lot of people I feel, especially on that Dark World video, probably just people that aren't subscribed, uh, did not watch the video at all or did not watch until the end before they commented. So watch the video to the end, then leave a little comment. I really appreciate it. Let's dive on into it, shall we? a bit of a longer intro than usual but regardless hello ladies and gentlemen it's your host with the most Avery LR32 here and smash the ever-living booty butt cheek boo-boo stain off that subscribe button you didn't see that one coming did you so that we can climb even further beyond the 1k ladder so I want to talk about the ban list today because uh, I really want to get back to playing Pokemon because that game is really good even though sometimes it plays at a snail's pace with the frame drop I've gotten about as low as 15 to 20 FPS, I've noticed. We really need a new Switch. So if you're a Pokemon fan, be sure to pick it up. You may even just be listening to this while you're playing Pokemon, which is what I want to be doing right now. I've already got all eight gym badges. Let's go. <laughs> so needless to say, I've been taking a bit of a break from Yu-Gi-Oh! But I want to talk about what we could potentially see hits on an upcoming ban list. And like I said, I really want to get back to Pokemon. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to have no pictures up. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. If not, go look up the name of the card. <laughs> Big, big heart. So let's just dive on into this here. These are just my opinions, obviously, right? Uh, I feel like people kind of hate my opinions, especially if it's about fucking Dark World. <laughs> so, you know, if you don't like my opinion, you know, go watch a different video. <laughs> so all jokes aside, right off the gate or right off the bat, uh, banned Mystic Frickin' Mine, aka, as we call it on the channel, Mystic Douchebag. Now, what's funny about this is that I feel like I've become sort of a Mystic Mine King or a Prince, if you will, and I didn't even want the job. <laughs> like, I have the YCS Brazil first place Mystic Mine deck profile on the channel. It's got over 14,000 views, and like a bunch of my subscribers like Mystic Mine, and I'm over here like, I like it for the troll factor, but the card's toxic as hell and needs to be banned. Like, you're, you're selected for things that you don't want in life, I guess. I don't want any Mystic Mind, like, love, I guess. I just, I like the support, don't get me wrong, but I don't want to be known as the Mystic Mind guy. Like, that's my dad. <laughs> so, Mystic Mind needs to be banned. It's been dodged and freaking banned list bullets like Neo in the fucking Matrix. It needs to go. And so, yeah, it just... It's a toxic card. You know, people, if people aren't prepared for it, then it just rolls over people and wins games. If people are prepared for it, then it's like the format's just a bunch of back row hate in either the main or the side. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, like, can we just get rid of it? I don't think Maxi's coming back anytime soon. So, you know, don't, don't comment Maxi or anything like that. I just, I don't think we're ever going to get it back. So hopefully Mystic Mind will get banned on this next list for the love of God, please, Konami. Also, I have here potentially, I don't know yet, but Maybe Baroness de Fleur. Now, why do I say this before y'all get angry in the comments? Rawr, Avery, you're an idiot. Here's the thing with Baron. Number one, it still needs a fucking reprint. I don't know why we haven't gotten that yet. And number two, the fact that it's an Omni Negate, like that's whatever. But it's the fact that it can also once per turn pop a card. And then you can send it back into the extra deck to summon a monster from, I think it's like, what, the grave? And then you just remake the Baron and you have an Omni Negate again. So if you're not able to deal with the card on your turn for whatever reason, then they can just send it back, make it again, and then have another Omni Negate. And that doesn't seem super broken, but the issue is, is that leaving something like that, especially multiple copies, I feel like could become a really big issue down the line. So even if like we hit the card to ones that you only have the one to shuffle back, like no decks playing multiples, but it's the fact that you can. Um, I feel like if they were to either hit it to one or ban it, would deal with an issue before it ever really becomes a big issue. But again, I don't really know if they will. And the more that I talk about it out loud, the more I'm like, maybe they won't do that, right? So that's really all I have for the bands. I don't really feel like that there's a lot of insanely broken cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. I think that because of the fact we're in a tier zero Ishizu tier element format, that it's really 
Ishizu and possibly Sprite, we're going to be getting into that as well, that needs to be hit. Like, there's not a card that stands out in my mind like, oh, this needs to be banned. Like, Vertanaconda clearly need to be banned. There's not a card like that in the format, I feel. And so, in that regard, ban-wise, we're kind of healthy. It's just things need to be reeled in and, like, limited or semi-limited in that regard. So, moving into the limited, some form of Aigido, Kelbeck, Medora, and Keldeo need to be banned. I believe that we saw Aigido eventually get banned in the OCG. I could be wrong. I don't remember off the top of my head what exactly the OCG balance is, but they did hit these cards. That's the point. These cards need to be reeled in because even if you are not focusing on the milling aspect, it's the fact that you have a rank four toolbox that just self-extends. You know, Kelbeck is a hand trap. As soon as the opponent sends cards from their deck to the grave, you can use the Kelbeck, bounce back a special summon monster, bring it out. Or Aigido, bring it out, bring out another level four Earth Fairy. There's your two level fours for an Exceed or a Link, whatever. It's a engine that is so splashable that it just makes everything as a whole more busted. And it needs to be reeled in. I would argue maybe even Kelbeck and Aigido should be banned. But I think for the time being, I think we're going to see those cards get limited come 2023. Because I don't think we're going to get a balance till maybe like late December or January, February of 2023. Because in February, we get Photon Hypernova. We're going to have a new balance before that happens. Um, the main deck tier monsters, all the ones that fuse, they need to be limited. I believe Sharon is currently at two in the OCG. I feel like you should need to limit them all. Leave Rhino Heart at three, but like Meryl needs to go to one. Sharon needs to go to one. Because by having these cards at one, you have to basically play other cards or in a tier element deck. And you also don't have multiple copies to abuse milling. You know, you summon a Sharon and or rather special summon with its effect mill three cards oh hey i hit my other copy of sharon i'm gonna fuse now like that that shit needs to go the, the consistency in the rng baby back bullshit in this deck needs to be thrown in the garbage like real talk so i think hitting some sort of combination of the main deck tiers that fuse whether it's to one or to two or to whatever they they need to really be reeled in so along with that i think also primeval planet the field spell i think it needs to be hit to one you know it's like a trick star light stage but it's once per turn for a search uh well when you activate it rather but then once per turn it can pop a card like especially with how much tier can play on your turn that's like having a pop interrupt during the opponent's turn so the opponent is like essentially playing with like what a four card hand if you end on baron and the primeval planet and a way to shuffle back cards from the grave into your deck it's it's disgusting it Woo, it, it needs to go. It needs to go. Also, along with going to one, I think Sprite Elf needs to go to one. Sprite Elf is definitely the most broken card, in my humble opinion, out of power of the elements. And the fact that it's a generic Link 2 monster. Like, it just takes two monsters, including one level 2. So many decks can use that. And the more level 2s we get, the more broken Sprite Elf becomes. Like, you can't tell me that it's healthy, that you can make in, like, a, a Runic Ashizu deck, play Diviner, and then, like any other monster and make a level uh, make a link to sprite elf and use the sprite elf on the main on the opponent's main phase to get out diviner to dump aikido make both players mill five more like th th these should not be interactions that any deck can do or that decks just have access to in general it's really not healthy you know games already take so long enough as they do you know uh, declaring your trigger effects in like a tier element mirror match like that shit just, it, it needs to go. It needs to go. Semi-limited. I really don't have a lot here. I just have two things. Uh, well, one of two things. Either Runic Tip or Runic Fountain. I would argue that maybe these cards should even go to one because of the fact that Runic, I feel, has just really taken off here in the TCG. And I feel that having these cards legal at three just adds so much consistency to something like Runic Sprite. It adds consistency to Runic in general that... If you hit the fountain, yes, the deck as a whole does suffer, but who in the nine hells, the nine realms of hell wants to deal with Runic with three fountain and three tip? I feel that Runic in some way, shape, or form just needs to be toned back a little bit. Don't kill the deck. Like, don't just take it out back and shoot it. It, it hasn't done anything wrong. It's just a really broken sub-engine that needs to be reeled in. And I think if you do that, Runic still becomes playable. It's just more fair and it's not as splashable. So then finally to three, I have Pot of Desires. This card went from three to one and it's a two. Decks can kind of play it, but it's like, we enjoyed, like a lot of players enjoyed it at three. Like it, it's fine at three. Same goes for Yadagrasu. No one's playing it. It just got reprinted as a Starlight. You know that Konami wants people to buy Crystal's Revenge. 
they got to put Yada Grosso to three. I would argue Yada Grosso over Time Seal because Time Seal is a trap and you can trap trick it. And then, you know, you're locking out draw phases and stuff and that becomes kind of toxic. I don't know if Dark Worlds would play something like that with Time Seal. Um, but let's just, let's not even go down that road. Just leave Time Seal at one. Um, and also Spellbook of Judgment. Have you seen Spellbook of Judgment? <laughs> I haven't seen hide nor tail of it. I feel like, you know, Spellbook of Judgment could actually come to three. I never thought I would say that considering I played in 2013 in the Dragon Ruler Spellbook Tier 0 format. But yeah, like, what does Spellbook of Judgment even do nowadays? Like, we're not in 2013 anymore, man. I feel like Judgment could truly come back to three and it would be fine. I also feel like some Sky Striker cards could come back to three as well, whether it's multi-roll. I don't, I really don't know if Engage should come back to three. I feel like it's just better off at one. Um, but we are getting new Sky Striker support. Um, like I think they just revealed some of the OCG premium pack, I think is what it was. Um, so, and they just reprinted the, like the whole deck core. So why not give people more copies of cards to play with? Plus, Sky Striker is just a good rogue deck. Giving them more copies of cards like is not a bad thing. Uh, and then finally, for my hot take here, unless you know you could consider Fiber Draw my hot take. Final countdown to three. Like this card's been at one for years, and I feel like Konami put it to one just because some player I forget his name uh, topped our America, uh, the North American Nationals, with a final countdown deck. But, like, having it at three is really not a big deal. Like, having it at one is like, okay, if it gets negated, you shot your shot, and now you're going to lose if you don't have a backup plan. But, like, why can't Final Countdown be at three? You know, games already go on for long enough as they fucking do, trying to declare all your trigger effects and solve out the chains in, like, a tier element mirror. Why not throw in Final Countdown in the mix? It's not like you're ever going to get it off anyway, because the games are so damn long anyway from turn to turn. So, like, if you pay 2,000 life points, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. You're going to lose in time because you have lower life. You know, then you're forced to play things like Cauldron and all that, whatever. The days of a pure Final Countdown deck are just so gone, man. Even back in the day when people played pure Final Countdown decks with three Final Countdown, like, they were uh, playing stall cards, like, in their deck. They were doing a 40-card stall deck where they would stall you out game one to win Final Countdown. Then in the next two games, they wouldn't even use Final Countdown. They would just, you know, keep their life points up or stall you out in the time. Like, that's really all the deck was. So, guys, these are my banless thoughts. Please let me know down in the comments if there's something I'm missing. I don't feel like Sword Soul needs to be hit. I don't feel like Sun Avalon needs to be hit or branded because we're in a tier zero format. I think all of the decks right now are doing everything that they can to keep up. You need to take tier element and maybe even some other sprite hits. Take them out back, put them down, you know, maybe even hit elf or blue to one. But I just feel like you got to really focus this next banless on hitting tier and any other cards that potentially cash Tira can abuse, even though I really don't feel like that deck's going to be amazing. It's going to be tier one, but I mean, it loses to fucking Nibiru. So, you know, take that for what you will. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.